Hey guys, welcome back to UK Diver. If it's your first time here, then just welcome. I'm glad that you're here for part three and the final part of the Egypt series where I'm gonna do you a little review and my thoughts on how I found my first Egyptian liverboard. So, let's talk about the boat. The boat I booked onto was Emperor Superior. And I think the best way to describe the boat is She's like that old pair of slippers that you have. Super comfy, but fraying around the edges a little bit. She's super comfy, no problem with that. The cabin was super comfy. The lounge was super comfy. But there's just little bits that I think could do with a bit of a freshen up, to be honest with you. There's also some other bits that worried me a bit more than that, I've got to be honest. Mainly, the big hole in the side. Now, on the port side, just behind the exhaust, while we were there, there was definitely a bit of wood that had kind of fell off or frayed away or burnt i'm not quite sure what it was but it was definitely wood and it was definitely old when we got back into harbour they went out and put some paint on it and i've got some pictures here and i don't know if you can see i'll zoom in the, just that, that little bit of fray in there that is where there was sort of a bit of an old so didn't inspire that much confidence but apart from that she's not too bad at all like I say, it's just little things the the cushions are really faded the um, bean bags that they've got they've not quite enough of them and they're just getting a little bit tired so i think she just needs a bit of a freshen up compared to some of the other boats that are moored against it's clear that empress superior is one of the old girls of the red sea the ac meh marginal maybe wasn't that super cold but it was it was it was okay it was comfy it was it was fine so the boat if i give it a score i would probably give it you know out of 10 it's probably a five i think she's probably just getting maybe a smidge long in the tooth but i think if you want something super luxurious and super new she's probably not the boat for you would i book on again probably not i think empress fleet has got some newer boats we were being followed around by the asthma boat which looks anyway from a distance certainly a bit more modern and a bit more fresh and i would probably book on something like that to be honest with you one other thing about the boat that i wasn't particularly happy with is i found the fact that when you were in the harbor now don't get me wrong guys i understand when you're out at sea you need power you need a generator to generate power but when you're in the harbor for me in my mind you should be on shore power and what i found with both the emperor boats is when we were in their marina you didn't you spent two days sat there with the engines ticking over again generating the electricity now i've got some photos here of a boat just down the way but you can see here she's plugged into shore power so shore power is there so my one question to emperor divers is well if they've got shore power which must be cleaner than having the diesel chugging away i mean certainly for my lungs it's not the cleanest boat you know from an emissions point of view is why the hell aren't you for me anyway that was that was a smidge disappointing not massive not enough to put me off and again both boats even the asthma boat was sat there burning away diesel for two nights when we were moored in the marina so it's you know whatever needs to happen that needs to happen because it's not great for your customers it's certainly not great for the environment and i don't think it's really great for the brand either you know we're supposed to be a bit more conscious like i say some point you know i'm fully aware that boats and cars and all that kind of thing burn these fossil fuels but we're all trying to do that little bit to make ourselves a bit better and i think this is one thing that you really could be doing a fair bit better on so moving on let's talk about the service So this is where, guys, Emperor Divers was absolutely brilliant. Now, I, like I say, first Egyptian liverboard, I can't compare them against Blue O2 or any of the other ones. But what I can tell you is I know what good service looks like and they were superb. And I'm not talking about just the guides. They were great. Geordie and Carlos, big shout out to you. And also Jace that was on the boat as well. Keep it sweet, darling. We booked this back in 2019, as I've probably already said in one of the previous videos. And we had to cancel and reschedule and cancel and reschedule. And the guys over at the booking team, nothing was too much trouble. Emails were responded to really promptly, to be fair. You know, whether we're sending them at 11 o'clock at night or first thing in the morning, within a couple of hours, I got a response. And it was not a negative response. It was a positive response. Yeah, no, nothing was too much trouble. Booking the hotel for us when we first got there, absolutely fine. Absolutely top draw from that point of view. The guides themselves on the boat, I guess, are sort of the cutting edge. They're the, the people that you interact with the most, certainly personally. And again, I've just give a big shout out to Geordie and to Carlos. Carlos was the guy I was with, but Geordie was there. And also his girlfriend, Jason, was there as well. And again, 
super fun people guys super enthusiastic super bubbly and super knowledgeable as well and really looked after you but but only if you wanted them to the thing that me and neil found most refreshing about it which you know i've been to egypt before and i've done shore-based diving before and one thing i found with that is it's a bit cloying you know everyone's got to stay together in the little group and this that and the other whereas on the liverboard you know carlos once we'd done a couple of dives and he was happy that we were good competent and confident divers uh, he was like yeah you know if you want to go do this one yourself guys go do it yourself and a lot of the wrecks we just went off and did it yourself not with the entire group which was an absolute godsend because we got to do and see things that the other guys didn't because they were doing the disney tour so to speak so it's a bit of double-edged swords with guys isn't it guys because although you don't want to cluster in i don't want to miss anything either so we did do some guided stuff especially along the reefs if nothing more you know you drift along the reef it's not really much to go wrong with but i want the dive guide to point out the little critters to me the things that i might miss you know they all know where you know the resident octopus lives don't do everything on your own because you know these guys what you're paying these guys for is you know to use their knowledge as well so do make use of them but it was nice and i really enjoyed the fact that some dives me and neil could just go off and do his own things other dives we could you know make use of carlos's knowledge and you know get him to point things out to us and show us things absolutely cannot fault it like if you could give it 110 percent which you can't mathematically but if you could i would because they were absolutely top draw and i have no problems at all absolutely 10 out of 10 for the staff okay the final thing i just wanted to briefly talk about guys is the tour itself so as you know from video two and video one or whatever we did the northern Rex and reefs tour and i've already gone into the reasons that i went and did that tour so i'm not going to do that again overall what did i think about it i thought it was good i mean the dive in egypt guys is superb anyway you know even if you're just doing a house reef it's they're amazing i could spend a week just doing a house reef because i like the little stuff you know what i mean and there's lots and lots of little stuff per square inch in egypt there really really is but some of the bigger stuff some of the bigger wrecks were also on my target list because it's bucket list diving however the one thing i will say and you probably if you've not done an egyptian liverboard you probably know this or you think you know this because i thought i knew this this is tourist diving okay this is disney park diving and it really is disney park diving and for me although i knew that i didn't really know what i was on about do you know what i mean it wasn't really in my head but when you're going down on the thistle gorm for example let's use the big one that's what everybody wants to dive and there's you your boat your 26 divers and then the other seven boats 26 divers that's also moored alongside you it gets a bit crammed down there and they've got on a lot of the wrecks they've got like their own little tourist route you know the little disney park you go in here you swim around to the end and then back again and that was the thistle gum you know you swam in here you went to the end you come across you come back and it was out and as you were coming out the next batch was coming in it was if they got a gift shop at the end you could have stuck a pair of mickey mouse ears on it called it disney it was a bit like that so you know for uk divers there is nothing more soul destroying than when you get out onto a dive site and there's another boat there in egypt you get there there's seven other boats there so yeah that was sort of the tour would i do it again hmm i don't know i mean would i go back to egypt and do a liverboard again yeah absolutely would i go and do that again no i probably don't think i would i think i'd probably even think of abandoning the wife and going and do a southern trip to do something else but i think what it also has given me a bit of a taste for is to go and do something in the red sea that's a smidge more exotic so maybe sedan there is a boat that runs out of there the don Cuesta, so i might be interested in, in organizing some of that and then i think blue o2 actually do a liverboard out of djibouti as well yeah maybe something like that maybe something off the beaten track a little bit more a bit more effort a bit more time probably certainly a lot more money but i think it'd be definitely worth it to go and not have another seven boats on the dive site that you're diving so if you feel the same and you fancy that trip then please do drop me a line because obviously I'm, i'll need a, a group of buddies to go with so if that could be you then please do let me know but that's it for the moment i'm off to meet the contact for my diving for tomorrow it's all super top secret at the moment so i can't say anything more about it but 
if you haven't done already please do hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out do hit the little notification bell as well because if you don't hit that then youtube won't tell you about it and if you found this video this series or any of the other content that i put out slightly useful please do give this video a like it does help the channel out massively so i really would appreciate it it's just down there yeah just go press it now just press it now. perfect thank you very much but other than that guys as always i will see you on the next one